All right, hey guys, my name is Shadow, and welcome back to some Elite Dangerous. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to try out Biweave Shields, but we're going to do so on a Vulture. Now, I was going to do this on the Imperial Cutter, but that's like the biggest ship you can get. And the thing about that is the Biweave Shields on that thing suck. I tried that out a little bit. It was not good. So we're going to try out smaller Biweave Shields that have a higher regen rate. Now, also, I was going to try out bi-weave shields with the reinforced um, upgrade on them. However, what that does is it completely kills the regen rate and it makes the bi-weave shields really pointless. So, I've put a different upgrade on our bi-weave shields. We'll actually start out taking a look at the bi-weave shields for this build because we're going to talk about the whole build in this video. But let's take a look at our bi-weave shields. So, of course, we have the 5C because it's the Vulture and we want the biggest shields possible. Anyways, we have actually done the Thermal Resistant Shield modification. We have Grade 5 of that. Now, this doesn't mess with the regen rate really in any way. Really, well, in any negative way. Okay, in fact, we have a slightly higher regen rate. I guess that was a secondary effect that I didn't notice when I was doing the upgrade. So, yeah, if anything, that's helped our regen rate, whereas if we had done the reinforced upgrade, it would just be in the toilet. So... We're gonna do that today. Now, let's let's take a look at the rest of the build really quick. So we'll go out of there and we'll start with the core internal first because that is, of course, the core of the build. Now we have the military grade composite on here. However, I've done a little bit of a different modification to this. I've gone with lightweight armor for this because this ship is a fighter. Whereas like with the Anaconda and the Imperial Cutter and even the Python to some extent, I go with like heavy duty armor. That's because those are big ships and I just want them to be tanks and not take any damage and I hate taking damage. But with this, we have the lightweight armor and now we're getting 305 meters per second because we have also, clicking back, we have also the 5A thrusters with grade five dirty drive tuning. And I got a pretty decent roll on this. So, you know, our optimal multiplier is pretty up there. It's pretty good. We've got 305 meters per second. It was 306, and then I put in a module reinforcement. This is actually the first time I'm trying out module reinforcement, so we'll see how that works. Anyways, we have our 4A power plant. Now, the Vulture's biggest shortcoming, in my opinion, is its power plant. It's got the same power plant as the Cobra, but it's a much bigger ship than the Cobra. Yeah. But anyways, we have the 4A power plant with overcharged grade 5. Now, I know all of you guys keep going, Shadow, that's too much heat. Ah, you're going to blow up your ship when you're trying to fuel scoop or when blah, blah, when your shield cells are stuff. Well, no, it's fine. I mean, it's a little hot. Yeah, okay, granted, it's a little hot, but just don't be crazy and you'll not die. You won't die. But with the grade 5, with the grade 5 overcharged, we're getting a maximum output of 21.53 megawatts. And that wasn't even that great of a roll, but it was pretty good. It's 38% higher than the baseline, so that's pretty good. It's good enough for, you know, whatever we've got on here. Now deployed, we're gonna have to do a little bit of power management to get this down a little bit, but I don't think it's gonna be too, too big of a deal. Anyways, so we have our frame shift drive, yeah, okay, grade 5, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. I mean, again, it's a combat build, it doesn't really depend on its jump range. But we are getting exactly 20 light years. Look at that, exactly 20 light years. That's amazing. This thing really normally jumps like crap, so... Yeah, well, I mean, not crap, but it's not... It's not the best jumper in the game for a combat ship, but... It's, it's not amazing. It's not amazing. Anyways, life support... We have gone with the 3D, and yeah, if you get your cockpit blown out, that's not a lot of time to, to get back to a station. However, don't do that. Don't get your cockpit blown out. Yeah. So anyways, we've gone with the lightweight modification for this. Now, that doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but it is contributing to the 305 meters per second because we have, you know, lightweight grade 4. Cool. Lightweight grade 4. Anyways, power distributor. We have a pretty typical thing. We have charge enhanced grade five, which I recommend for pretty much everything. I don't think there's really a reason to use anything other than charge enhanced. If there is, I have not encountered the situation where other things are useful. 
anyways so next we have the 4d sensors now i was i i have tried like a sensors and stuff with gimbaled weapons because you guys have told me that sensors are in fact linked to gimbaled weapons but i haven't really noticed a huge difference in like the tracking arc and stuff like that uh if there's a difference it's really negligible so i'm just gonna keep keep going with the d because of the lightweight stuff and i've also put long range scanner on here i don't know if that's going to be useful but this is a new upgrade that we have so we'll find out if this is useful we it, we can apparently now detect things up to 8.8 .8 kilometers away so if that works that's cool i don't know if that's going to be particularly useful for fighting stuff but we'll find out anyways then the the vulture is one of those ships that has received a new military slot because it's a, a dedicated combat ship basically so that's awesome because it gets a five or a, a class five military slot and we can put a 5a shield cell bank in that slot so i've done so and we've modded this up with specialized shield cell grade four which gets us like a 19 yeah 19 percent reduction in the thermal load of the shield cells so that's great that's great that's that's a big help that keeps in, in fact yeah you know, that actually in my experience keeps the heat down slightly more than 19 percent like like maybe 25 percent as much i don't know why that should be but in, in previous testing, when I have had temperatures go up to like 150%, and I've had reductions of even like 16 or 17% in the thermal load, my heat would only then spike up to like 125, 122 rather than 150. So I don't think that corresponds directly to what's going on in the field, but maybe it does and there are just other variables at work. That's probably that. But whatever, so that should be a pretty good reduction for us. Anyways, now let's go back in here and take a look at the optional stuff. We've already looked at the bi-weave shields. And now this is the first time I'm using any module reinforcement. And that's because, well, we're in a vulture and I do expect the shields to go down occasionally. But with the bi-weaves, it shouldn't be too long. And if they do get weak, I think we should be able to recharge them pretty quickly. However, when they do go down, and they probably will, we have the module reinforcement. So... Our hull will probably take some damage, but our modules should be okay. I guess I'm really more worried about that on this ship. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe If I should be using hull reinforcement, let me know. I don't know, but I'm going to go with the module reinforcement package for this. Then we have a two-way fuel scoop. This really doesn't make any difference to this build whatsoever. You could leave it out if you want. Then we have a cargo rack, just because I needed somewhere to put fish. And in fact, when I was doing fish, I just left this out and put a cargo rack in. But if I want to get more fish... Well, I need this because this is still the beta build and you can see that right down here. It says beta. So anyways, then we have, of course, the advanced discovery scanner. I'm not going to do the Halo song today, but it's there and there aren't any upgrades for this yet. I'm so sad. We should get some, we should get some love for the advanced discovery scanner. Come on, FD, FDev, come on, give us some advanced discovery scanner upgrades. All right, let's talk about the weapons next. There are only two of them because this, well, this is the vulture. And now I've put gimbaled weapons on this. However, this is multi-crew time so the vulture actually does have multi-crew capability it has two seats so you can have a gunner in this ship so if you wanted to if you wanted to have a gunner in this ship you would have to put turrets on this so you can do that but i'm not putting turrets on this right now because we're not doing multi-crew at the moment but i kind of want to look at that in the future so multi-crew so anyways what do we have on here we have the, the large beam lasers, and they, of course, have the great 5 efficient weapon mod, because why would you use anything else on a large beam laser? I mean, there's there's literally no drawback to using this. It's all positive stuff. Even if you get a crap roll, it is all positive, and it's great. I mean, yeah, it makes beam lasers amazing. Like, why would you ever not use efficient beam lasers when you could use efficient beam lasers? There's just no reason not to use efficient beam lasers. Get efficient. If you don't have Brew Tarquin unlocked in the live server, let me just tell you, go unlock him, like, right now. Just do it. Just invest however much time that, that it takes. I know there's, like, two or three engineers you gotta unlock first, and it's this whole big thing. But once you do it, you only have to do it once, and then you have him forever, and you'll just be glad you did, because efficient beam laser grade 5. That's, that's it. So we have four shield boosters on this. Now, yeah, they have done the thing where the shield boosters are experiencing diminishing returns at a pretty staggering, staggering rate. 
But yeah, our shield strength is 658.8, which is okay. I mean, it's the Vulture. It's okay for the Vulture. So what I've done here is I've gone with... Da -da -da, we've gone with two Thermal Resistant Shield Booster Grade 5 upgrades. Because as far as I know, the Resistances already experienced diminishing returns before they implemented the the new thing where just straight shield boost experience now now experiences diminishing returns so i've only gone with two of these now i've gone with thermal resistant because that's the upgrade that i've put on the bioweave shield is thermal resistant so i wanted to boost that as much as possible now it's going to help you out with stuff like getting shot by lasers and stuff i, I think it probably helps with plasma accelerators I'm, i could be wrong about that but i i think that's a thermal weapon and, you know, other things that are thermal weapons. I mean, it helps you out with, with that kind of stuff. Now, this is going to make you somewhat weaker against, like, multi-cannons and, and, you know, explosive stuff like missiles and stuff like that. So that's, yeah, that's probably a drawback. But it's not a huge thing. It's only 4%, but we're stacking that a bunch. So, yeah, so we have two of those. This one is also the same thing. So, okay, this is actually a bigger drawback on the kinetic and explosive. But, I mean, we're getting, like, pretty good resistance against lasers, which I feel like is what we're probably going to be getting hit by most of the time. Anyways, so these other two here are heavy-duty shield boosters. So I'm hoping if we're only stacking two of each, then we're not experiencing incredible diminishing returns. I mean, we are, we are getting some. I know, I know we're getting some, but hopefully I'm kind of balancing it out between my resistances and my actual shield boost stuff so i don't know if there's a if there is a more optimal configuration for this please let me know in the comments i would be very interested to know what it is and i'll even try it out and oh i just remembered somebody in the comments wanted a shout out in the video and i told him i would try to do that i think his name was mystical so shout out to mystical or was it mythical i think it was mystical Anyways, you know who you are. You, you were the guy who asked me for a shout out. I said I'd try to remember. And so there it is. Anyways, that that now taken care of. I think that's pretty much the entire build. So we can take a look at the livery and stuff. Oh, I've been playing a ton of Mass Effect Andromeda. And so I've called this ship the Tempest. So yeah, there's that. Uh, I've got the tactical ice paint job on in here because I had the Black Friday skin on this, which looked really cool. However, it's dark as crap in this bay, and I couldn't actually see the ship doing that. So I put the tactical ice on here to kind of, you know, counteract that and stuff. So anyways, there's all that stuff. Um, Nameplates we don't actually have yet, as far as I know, but when this patch actually goes live, we should be able to buy this in the store. And we've actually found out you know how much these are going to cost so for people in america it's going to be like 250 for for like a pack of nameplates basically and i think it's only a single purchase and you get them and then you have it for all your ships and it's like different styles of stuff and all that kind of stuff and of course i am using the ship kit da 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 yes the ship kit so there's all that stuff and the red weapon color and then i don't know what engine detailing is i haven't heard anything about this They've probably said something about this, but I don't always read all the patch, or not patch, but I don't really always read all the um, newsletters or watch all the live streams. I watch some of them, but I don't always get to. But if you guys know what engine detailing is going to be about, let me know that down in the comments. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. So this will be part one, because this is the typical thing that we do, where we take a look at the build, and then in part two, we will go and try this build out. Now, last time, I went into a conflict zone when we tried out the Imperial Cutter. That was okay. However, I don't feel like I had as much fun doing that as I did in the Hazardous Resource Extraction site. I know you guys all said, go to a conflict zone, and so I did. However, I didn't really enjoy it as much. So when we try this out, It'll be in Hazrez. It'll be in Hazrez. Because that's that's just what I need to do to have fun. I'm not really a conflict zone guy. So it'll be in Hazrez, and that'll be in part two. So that should be coming in a couple of days. And yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. So guys, thank you for watching. Let me know what you thought down in the comments. Like the video if you liked it, and even if you didn't like it, hit the like button. Hit just push it. Just push it. Okay. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you thought down in the comments. That's it for me, and I will see you guys in the next video.